Number one at 6.30. King 5 News starts now. Good evening. We start with that fiery crash that has traffic still backed up six miles along I-5 near Marysville. An SUV crossed the freeway median, slamming into a charter bus just north of downtown Marysville. One person is dead. North Bureau Chief Rob Piercy joins us live from the scene. Rob. That crash just happened after 3 o'clock this afternoon, Dennis and Gene, and here some three and a half hours later, traffic is still a mess. This is what we know. An SUV was headed southbound on Interstate 5 when it crossed two layers of barrier, cable barrier, and crashed head-on with a charter bus. We want to show you some dramatic video shot by a person who was driving and happened to have a video camera. It captures this car up in flames. The driver of that car was killed. The driver of that tour bus, which was empty at the time from Canada, she was taken to Harborview Medical Center where we are told tonight she is in satisfactory condition. She has talked with her tour bus operator trying to explain what happened. We have some video from up above shot by Sky King giving you some perspective on this crash. Of course, cable barriers have been at the center of a very long debate here in Washington over whether they are effective or not. Tonight, we talked with Dave McCormick from Washington State Department of Transportation, who says they are going to be taking a very close look at this crash. This is just, just a tragedy here tonight, and I'm not sure that any kind of barrier would have prevented that. Our, uh, our investigation of the accident is going gonna, is gonna to come up with some conclusions about, about this particular accident. And you can see right now some state trooper investigators looking at where two of the cables on this particular set of cable barriers broke loose today when this crash happened. When they added cable barriers, they moved these ones out further into the northbound lanes, and then they added this set of cable barriers right here that sit by the southbound lanes. From what we were able to tell just by looking at it, that SUV, when it hit this particular set of cables, it either went under or went over top of them, did not break the cables. When it hit this second set, it snapped the cables and then crashed into that tour bus, ultimately killing the driver of that car. Again, Washington State Department of Transportation going to take a close look at this crash and try and figure out what went wrong. If you have anybody who is expected to be traveling through Marysville on Interstate 5, it's going to be a long time coming. This investigation could go on for the next several hours, and traffic will continue to be a nightmare. For now, we're live in Marysville. North Bureau Chief Rob Piercy, King 5 News. Thank you, Rob. Now to the other big story of the evening. The Sonics may soon be headed to Renton. It came down to Bellevue and Renton, and Renton has been chosen for a proposed $500 million arena. King 5's Jim Foreman joins us now live from Renton with Reaction. Jim? Gene Renton, once known for the planes they make here, now could be known as the home to the Sonics. Some 29 different sites looked at as a potential place to put the new arena and convention center. And tonight, in the end, it looks like Renton was the slam dunk. The Sonics' new owner, Clay Bennett, made no secret of his desire to move the Sonics and Storm out of the key arena. The question, though, was where? Tonight, Renton has won out over Bellevue as Bennett's preferred choice. The city of Renton is certainly a city that is on the verge of, if not in the beginning of uh, a transformation. The uh, project would uh, trigger vast economic development activity. The announcement came at a state senate hearing. The Sonics are asking for at least $300 million in taxpayer money to help develop this site and pay for the new arena that could cost more than half a billion. The request is drawing skepticism from lawmakers. Under the plan, the extra sales tax you're now paying in King County for Safeco and Quest Fields would be extended until the year 2029. The half percent restaurant tax would also be extended for the Sonics. So would the tax on rental cars that now pay off Safeco and the Kingdom. And beginning in the year 2021, the 2% motel tax would be extended until the bonds on a new basketball arena are paid off. These are investments. I mean, we Literally, these are investments, and I think that they should be made. The stadium would be next to the sprawling landing site, an urban village and shopping destination where work is well underway. It's Renton evolving to a new identity, yes. The Renton Chamber of Commerce says this is all still very early in the game, but... There's a lot of work to be done, a lot of things to look at, but economically, it, it would be a tremendous benefit uh, to our city. 
None of this is a done deal because if a deal to move the Sonics out of the key isn't hammered out by October 31st, Bennett could move the team to his home of Oklahoma City. But if they eventually do move here, they'll be joining the Seahawks, which will be opening a new practice facility in Renton. And that's where we're live tonight. I'm Jim Foreman, King 5 News. Jim, thank you. It looks like a dead end in the city of Seattle's plan for a smaller tunnel to replace the Alaskan Way viaduct. Today, state transportation engineers say the two-lane tunnel hybrid is not safe or practical for drivers. The state says the tunnel's shoulder would be too narrow when all the lanes are in use. But the city says the shoulder's no narrower than what's now inside the Battery Street Tunnel. Still, Seattle voters can weigh in on the tunnel versus viaduct replacement in an advisory vote scheduled for March 13th. Authorities want to know who set off an explosive device outside a school near Enumclaw. The blast shattered several windows and damaged a heating duct at Westwood Elementary last night. A neighbor says the explosion sounded like a stick of dynamite. Authorities searched the school for other explosive devices but found none. District administrators say there have been no threats against the school. Three Fort Lewis Army Rangers all pleaded not guilty today to charges of hate crimes against an African-American man. The defendants are charged with felony harassment and assault. Prosecutors say they attacked and choked a man outside a bar in Lacey last month and yelled racial slurs. The victim was hospitalized but later released. The accused recently returned from Iraq and two of them are brothers. The University of Washington runs into trouble for widespread violations at its animal research lab. A private accrediting agency has put the research lab on probation after finding numerous problems with the way lab animals are being cared for. King 5's Deborah Feldman has the story which is new at 6.30. The sixth floor of the University of Washington's Health and Sciences building houses tens of thousands of little lives and stretches for a quarter of a mile. It was built back in 1947, and while it may have been state-of-the-art back then, it is not cutting it by today's standards. At the end of last year, the school received notification from the association considered to be the industry's gold standard that UW's lab animal conditions are not up to par, to the point, in fact, where the university has been put on probationary accreditation, a first for the school. We really need to do something about this. The report commended the school for the veterinary care lab animals receive. But it also found a host of other problems, ranging from excessively soiled rat cages to temperature control to excessive levels of dust and rodent dander. When you have in excess of 100,000 rodents scattered over eight facilities, there are bound to be uh, instances where there are uh, mistakes made, and we want to deal with these and, and correct them as quickly as we can. It's not a surprise to PETA. Animal activists with people for the ethical treatment of animals say the UW should not be using the animals if they're not being properly cared for. That is just an unconscionable excuse. If you don't have the proper facilities and resources to care for these animals, you don't have them. Bottom line. One of the short-term solutions the university has taken following the issuing of this report is to move tens of thousands of their rodents from the old building into this new one that just opened less than a year ago. A longer-term fix, completely new quarters for the lab animals, is likely several years and many millions of dollars away. We took them out and we won't put them back until we know that that facility will, will take care of their needs. So we have an instance where we agree with PETA. In Seattle, Deborah Feldman, King 5 News. The UW has until May 1st to show it has made significant improvements or it might lose its accreditation. That in turn could prevent the school from receiving some grant money. Still to come at 6.30. These animals are specifically equipped to do this job. Sea lions trained to make an arrest underwater and you'll see them do it and you'll see where they'll be put to work. Look closely and you'll be surprised. The local baby wears his heart not on a sleeve but somewhere else. Like milk? You might really like bilk. A new brew geared for the health conscious. See what it tastes like and what inspired this hybrid beer. A controversy over stem cells but this time it has nothing to do with saving lives. A treatment doctors are using instead of breast implants. Still a few showers out there tonight, though they are decreasing. Quick check of our radar right now shows most of the activity, though not all, either east of Olympia or around Snohomish County. Now here's what we're expecting later on tonight. 
Scattered showers should diminish by about 9 o'clock. Temperatures slow to decrease, though, and more rain on the way tomorrow. Details just ahead. NBC tonight. King 5 News with Gene Anderson, Dennis Bounds, Jeff Renner, First Alert Weather, and Paul Sylvie Sports. Number one in Western Washington, King 5 News at 6.30. Last night we told you about an idea to have dolphins and sea lions protect naval base Kitsap Bangor. Well, tonight we've got the amazing video of just how it works. No human diver can swim as fast or see as far as a trained dolphin underwater. When the dolphins spot an intruder trying to get near the base, they drop a bright beacon to mark the spot, then race back to alert the trainers. A plan to bring the marine mammals here 20 years ago failed after complaints by animal rights activists, but now the Navy says the program is better. These animals are specifically equipped to do this job. They can do it better than anything else that we have at the moment. There is no technology that can do it better than they can. The Navy will take public comment about the plan next month. He's not wearing his heart on his sleeve, but a local baby is wearing his heart on his heart. Started out just looking kind of like a little blood blister almost, and then has gotten to be the shape of a little heart. Seven-month-old Reese Iverson did not have the mark when he was born, but his parents noticed it developing about a week later. At first, it was dark and raised. Then it started to fade into a little red heart. Doctors say by the time Reese has his first birthday, his heart could be gone, but he will always be mommy's valentine. <laughs> An important warning for anyone ordering flowers on Valentine's Day. Dozens of companies posing as local florists are not local at all. And if you order, you may be paying more and getting less. It's a practice that's not only deceiving, it is illegal. King 5's Lori Matsukawa has the story. Look for a neighborhood florist in the phone book or online and you'll find listings like these. They have local sounding names, some even have local phone numbers. But call any one of them. That call may be transferred to a call center. A call center could be located anywhere in the country. The companies take your order, then arrange for real local shops to deliver your flowers. It's a practice the FTC wants consumers warned about. What they do is they charge a processing fee on top of the cost of the floral arrangement or they may substitute a less valuable floral arrangement than what the consumer ordered and pocket the difference. To see how it works, we ordered a $60 arrangement from Flowers with Gifted Elegance. The flowers arrived from an actual neighborhood shop that was contracted to fill the order. We then ordered flowers directly from that shop. And with the same budget and specifications, we got a totally different result. You see that difference between each. The shop's owner says the reason the arrangements look so different is because of money. Flowers with Gifted Elegance only gave her $42 to work with, pocketing 30% of the budget. The issue here is that the consumer is being deceived. 19 states, including Washington, have laws making it illegal for any company to misrepresent its geographic location. But according to the FTC, that's not stopping it from happening. Not enough consumers are complaining about it to really bring it to the attention of the law enforcement authorities. Lori Matsukawa, King 5 News. None of the national flower brokers contacted would go on camera. However, Flowers with Gifted Elegance says what happened with this particular flower order was rare. They claim the practice is not deceiving and that most customers don't care where a company is based as long as they get the product they ordered. To make sure you're actually getting a local florist, ask for driving directions while you're on the phone.